Hello everyone, this is the GEPRC HX2. Featuring a 12 amp 4 in 1 ESC, F405 flight controller with an OSD, 48 channel VTX with pit mode, 25 milliwatt, 100 milliwatt, and 200 milliwatt. Run Cam Swift, GIP RC branded, GR1106 6000 KV motors, Jim Fan Hulky 2040 props. Mine came with an FR Sky XM Plus receiver, XT30 for your battery connection. Inside this 3D print is a buzzer and LED. Bottom plate appears to be 3 millimeters. Top plate appears to be 2 millimeters. Camera protection also appears to be 2 millimeters. Motor to motor, it does appear to be 110 millimeters. It weighs 88. 0.39 grams. It comes with four complete sets of props, an extra forever tube for your antennas, an extra battery strap, two Allen keys, battery gummy pad, connector, and some extra screws. So the factory tune that this one came with was very, very soft and loose, and I wouldn't suggest you fly it on the factory tune around anything close, um, whether it's homes or trees or any obstacles of any course, because I think that control factor is going to be difficult to overcome with those pits. Additionally, many people will say that uh, running 3S with these motors on a 12 amp ESC is going to be too much, and I find it fine. We've been doing this for a long time on ESCs of lesser quality from a year and a half ago that were 20 by 20 and it'll be fine. Where you might be stretching that a bit is if you were to run 2.3 inch prompts with higher KV motors. Uh, if you were to have uh, a 12 amp ESC with a burst rating that didn't go up to 20 amps or, or anywhere near and you had air mode on and you have a crash and you hit a prop, uh, there might be a voltage spike that would then damage the ESC, but not in this case with these small props. Speaking of the props, I'm not a big fan of the Hulkies. Uh, as you probably heard in the video, it has kind of an odd whistling sound, but that's not why I don't like them. I just find that they're just not very efficient. Um, they don't produce that much thrust, and they also are they're a little bit notorious for not being well balanced and that will also keep your tune relatively soft i think the tune that i have is respectable and that's what you see on screen now i i do want to note also this is not the run cam micro swift 2 this is the original you might be able to see it if i can get this uh if you zoom in real close i don't know if i can get my camera down there let me try Can you see that? Swift. Normally if it's the two, it will have the two next to the Swift and it will shift everything over. So this appears to be just the Micro Swift and not the 
Swift 2. The frame seems to have evolved. I have one of the originals. I put some scrap parts from some other machine that didn't fly very well on here and you'll see that there's quite a substantial difference in the frame thickness in the bottom plate as well as the camera mounting or camera protection plates. Hopefully you can tell the difference there. Uh, so this comes in a little bit porky, you know, we're getting close to 90 grams on this and for a 2 incher that's that's starting to get a little bit heavy. Um, really for a 2.5 it's actually getting heavy as well. Uh, but apparently they decided to bulk up the frame because maybe because of customer complaints. Uh, as far as these motors go, they're very smooth and I think they're, they're fine. On 6000 kV uh, you might be able to run these on 4S but not with these ESCs. I think with you uh, running 4S for the motors might be fine, but with the ESC you would have to swap that out if you're curious about this. Of course you can always fly this on 2S, it will just be a little less, um, it will have a little less performance overall. That's just kind of the nature of flying something this size and this weight on a 2S battery. Uh, the 3D printed part in the back, my buzzer sounds a little bit weird, like there's something inside of it. Hopefully that's not a fault with all the buzzers, and there is an LED inside here as well. I don't know why we call these forever tubes, because they don't last very long in my hands, but in this case, uh, they did last a while at least. In my crashes, I didn't snap these off, but I have a couple of other machines uh, on the desk out here where I have broken these clean off and so um, I'm not sure why they're called forever tubes but the tubes do keep the antennas nice and safe and out of harm's way and we have these little caps you might be able to save some weight if you don't feel the caps are necessary but that's going to be a minor as far as the antenna goes they have kind of an interesting little connection here we do have a UFL on there but this does pin it down pretty good and when you take in the top plate on and off which I had to do to bind up the receiver of course because you have to press the button on there to bind um, this holds it in place fairly well and I didn't find that it would come loose or pull the UFL connector off in the crashes that I had so that little tiny design right there is actually a pretty good little bit to look forward to the I don't know if that was dumb luck or by design but that works out pretty well for making sure our Tana doesn't come loose I do think that I ran mine on 25 milliwatts so the breakup that you saw you might not have if you pump it up to the highest power level which is 200 milliwatt you have little LEDs up here that indicate these things uh, up I think it goes blue green and then red where red indicates your power that's the bottom LED and the other two indicate your channel and your frequency I skip forward a little bit to the props and I think we can get more out of this by using uh, different props we can use these gem fans these were created in collaboration with Rotor X they're 25 35 uh, they are bull nose so they're a little bit louder and they, these were great for a very long time and we used to run these quite a bit and I think they're still fine and they may actually outperform you might want to look at thrust tests uh, comparing this uh, prop to this prop um, with various motors to see what you find. Uh, also, we have some other 2-inch props that we could try with the Cyclone, the Q2535Cs. Uh, these are very quiet, and that's one thing that you might like if you fly in neighborhood parks or things of that nature, or you just want to be more discreet. Uh, I think these props are a good choice, and uh, I think they'll reduce the amount of sound that is put off from flying the machine around quite a little bit. Now you probably noticed in the flight footage that from time to time I would have to nose up because I just didn't quite have enough thrust in my typical throttle range when I'm uh, going around corners hard and I need to hit the throttle in order to hold position that it would sometimes dip down and I'd have to nose back up as I hit the throttle because there just wasn't enough uh, torque and thrust coming off of the machine. Uh, that's not necessarily something that should be a deal breaker for you. It's just something that I noticed in my flight. Um, I get the feeling that most people don't fly like I do because I hear time and time again how hard I am on batteries. So, and that, that's just like how I like to fly. You know, we all fly differently. We all do different things. Um, I think if you're judging flight times in some of my videos, you might want to pump those up a little bit that you'll probably get um, another extra 20, 30, maybe even more seconds on your flight compared to what I am. I am running this on a 3S 550 milliamp battery and uh, I had a good time with it. It flies pretty well. Uh, I do think that um, again, these props, we could change these out and possibly get additional performance. At the very least, we can get less sound so we can be more discreet when we're flying. I, I think the components they use, they look fine. I didn't have any problems with mine. I didn't have any problems with the camera protection. Uh, you can see here where you even have enough camera protection that if you like the Micro Predator from Fox here, that you probably have enough space in there. And you have the sliding mechanism that I've talked about in several videos where you can move the camera 
forward and back from its mounting hole to where you could get that Foxier Predator, which does have a longer lens and longer nose on it, and it would still be protected in here. So that's a, that's a positive if you wanted to swap things out, or if you happen to break this somehow and then want to go to that camera, you can... I believe you can do that relatively easily. With this three post design that we have here, one on the back and two here in, in near the front, that helps to keep the weight down a little bit. We have one less post as traditional uh, for metal pieces, uh, but I, I do think we can improve that with other designs, but this is what we've got in this particular machine. You can see they've etched in the top plate their brand. Hopefully that comes through in camera nice and clear. That's kind of cool. We have more of that fabric tape that I am still looking for. I bought some book binding tape, which is close. But not quite. This stuff is uh, somewhat elusive. I'm still looking to track down what this stuff is. And the reason why I like this stuff is it appears that once you get it on there, it holds pretty well. And in this case, it looks like they've actually used two separate pieces. And it's still holding. And that's one of the things I find with my electrical tape is it tends to peel back. You know, you get some grease from your fingers on it when you're putting it on. And then it starts to starts to lift a little bit so that's what I'm looking for is some of this stuff hopefully I can get a nice clean shot of that maybe one of you know exactly where you can get it and I'd like to get some for my other builds overall I think it's a good machine the price point um, with a bind and fly comes in at $189 I think that that is a little bit high it's going to really depend on what you're looking for you're wanting machine bind and fly ready and it has all the bells and whistles because this one really does have everything that most people are looking for in a two inch outside of the props but props are always temporary I did break a few because it's been relatively cool again we actually had a cold burst where I couldn't fly outside we had two winter storms come through un unusually late in in the season so my flight time necessarily wasn't limited but it was broken up and it had some cold spells obviously when we get plastic and it gets or this pvc material and it gets cold when you do have a crash you do tend to snap off a blade so i think in in warmer time the these props would be more likely to be bent and bent back uh, versus snapping like they did for me in, in the colder weather i do know that the cyclone props that I mentioned previously are, are pretty robust and hardy props as well so that might be something you want to look into and I'll put links to those props down below uh, this machine came from Gearbest so I'll have a link down below for that if you have any questions or comments about this machine or my experiences please leave those in the section down below I appreciate your time and thanks for watching